Honourable Members, question number 34 has been asked by the Honourable Kohler to the Minister in the Presidency. The Minister. Thank you, Honourable House Chair. Although kidnapping for ransom has been identified as one of the modus operandi used by terrorist actors in South Africa and globally, the more than 50 daily kidnappings in South Africa relate to various criminal activities, including extortion rackets. So the kidnapping for ransom specifically to fund terrorist activities in the country remain unconfirmed. We are currently uh, attending to 23 suspected cases. Criminal investigations into the kidnapping for ransom cases, including with links with terrorism financing are ongoing and have been prioritized. These investigations form part of a concerted effort to address key deficiencies in South Africa's anti-money laundering and countering terrorism financing regime as identified by the Financial Action Task Force, which resulted in South Africa being greatly And therefore, the State Security Agency, along with other relevant departments, remain at work to identify, investigate, and when appropriate, to assist in preparation of cases for prosecution to counter sources of terror financing. The SSA continues to strengthen its counterterrorism capabilities and its capacity to counter the financing of terrorism financing through specialized recruitment, specialized training, technical assistance with relevant private sector institutions, and close cooperation and coordination with both domestic and foreign law enforcement agencies, including non-security cluster departments. As part of strengthening of capabilities, the SSA has finalized and is currently implementing the national countering the financing of terrorism strategy and the targeted financial sanctions operational framework. And furthermore, the SSA in the second part of the question is not responsible for arrest or prosecution of any cases. However, the SSA continues to fulfill its threat detection mandate by identifying threats relating to terrorism financing and elevating this to relevant authorities and departments for court-driven investigations and prosecution. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Honourable Kohler, you have the opportunity to ask the first supplementary question. Thank you, Chair. Uh, ministers generally agree that the blame for the fact that extortion syndicates are running rampant within our country, be it kidnapping, uh, construction, water, school, hospital and clinic mafias, lies at the feet of our intelligence agencies, the State Security Agency, crime intelligence, and to a lesser extent, defense intelligence. Now, it's globally known that there is financing of terrorist groups flowing out of South Africa, perhaps via these rackets. Is it that the agencies have chosen not to do anything for all these years, or are they incapable of doing it? The Honourable the Minister. Thank you, Honourable House Chair. As indicated in my earlier reply, we continue to strengthen our capability, and it's because Terror financing and terrorism on its own continues to change its own models of branding. So it's a matter of continuous change and, 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 and improvement on our system. As I've indicated, even with the grade listing, we have managed to get a new strategy approved that it, it integrates. And the operational framework on, um, on, 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 on strategic financial, uh, targeted financing, it includes the ability to designate those who finance terror and also to sanction uh, those who, who finance terror in, in from our country. So that work continues. There are other announcements that will be made when the team has reported on, on the great list, uh, on the work we're doing on grey listing, which is the integrated team that is led by Department of Finance, SSA, the SA Police Services, and the Department of Justice, the entities within the Department of Justice. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. The second supplementary question will be asked by the Honorable Makubela. <laughs> business <laughs> which is multidisciplinary. Leli holo alitimba ni makoi sasa ningzi mafrika. Uti basitagali. 
Chelatine ke mphatsiswa kuze kutsi nalaba semakhaya beve kutsi ngotiphi eh tinhlaka lotisekele wena ulithimba le state security agency kutsi unikete eh emaphoyisa naletinye tikhungo temthetho kutsi kulwisane nalokugebenga thank you honorable member ngekuthi bantu bafune tigidzi betimali thank you yeah, um, before we hand over to the Minister, um, it would seem Translation Services was not assisting us when this question was asked, so if, if we can please attend to that. Honourable Minister. Honourable House Chair, my, my sorti is not very bad, but there was a part that I, I, I missed uh, when she says, Utsimba. Utsimba. Let's see. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you for the translation services, the in-house translation services. Honorable House Chair, we continue to work with the multidisciplinary team of the police and that's why we call them intelligence-driven operations. And that's why I have specified 23 cases that we've been working on and the Minister of Police will soon make major announcements on breakthrough cases on the kidnapping for instance that have to be taken not only to court but which we think with that crack down we're getting to the root of the kidnapping for us. Honorable cases. Minister, my apologies uh, to interrupt you. There is a hand on the virtual platform of the... I can't see that far, unfortunately. The Honorable Souls. Uh, uh, thank you, Honorable House Chair. Uh, my hand was raised before the Minister stood up, so it is not on the Minister. But I wanted just for you to note, House Chair, that ASWA online totally have no uh, interpretation service, so we are unable to follow the proceedings uh, properly. Just yeah, to thank you. Uh, in this case, you were not worse off than those in the chamber, but we have asked that that be looked into. Uh, Honourable Minister, were you done or was there still a part? Thank you, uh, Honourable House Chair. And it's a pity that my, my train of thought has been a, a bit disorganized. But we, in terms of the work that we are doing, the police will make the necessary an announcement. And we are confident that with the work done in terms of kidnapping for ransom, we will also be able to prosecute on, on, on the matters. I do not want to preempt that work, but it's a part of ensuring and, uh, and dealing with the cake, also the matter that was raised by Honorable Connor Barnard, that we are being effective in dealing with uh, terrorism and counter-terrorism work, including the extortions, including the other rings. If you recall, the Minister of Police or, or announced work that is being done for the extortion uh, groupings, whether they are water tanker groups, whether they are, kidney, uh, they are construction mafias, and all others. So we have teams, multidisciplinary teams across the country, and we are going to have the handle of things and get a track of things as soon as we honourable member. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Minister. The third supplementary question will be asked by the Honourable Khadebe. Thank you, Honourable Chairperson, Honourable Minister. What proactive action has your department taken to ward off the targeting of South African citizens for kidnapping by foreign nationals, international syndicates and terrorist groups? And whether does your department consider it a threat to national security? Thank you. The Honourable the Minister. Thank you, Honourable House Chair. In terms of the national intelligence estimate and also national intelligence priorities, uh, counter-terrorism, including kidnappings and extortions are band one priorities and we should soon release the national intelligence estimate for the country so that when the country understands the kind of work that we are doing and the challenges that the country focuses on because national security is everybody's responsibility. As indicated earlier, we continue to work with the police, the prosecution. Honourable and... Minister, my apologies, I'm going to do it to you again. There is now a hand of the Honourable Skosana on the virtual platform. Honorable uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, House Chair, and to, to the Minister. Uh, Honorable House Chair, this issue, which is not resolved now, again, the issue of interpreters. No, you know, no, we, no, 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 but no, but can, can I just ask you to pause there? 
Um, I, I don't think it's in the best interest of the, the oral question session for us to come into this matter whilst the minister is on the floor. I, I will come back to you just after the minister has concluded, please. Thanks. Honourable the Minister, my apologies. Honourable First Chair, I want to plead that if there's a hand on, on the platform, I'll be allowed to complete the response and then you entertain the hand because it's quite disruptive in terms of... The difficulty is it might be a, a point of order, Honourable Minister, but please uh, proceed. As earlier indicated, Honourable, Honourable House Chair, that we continue to work with the multidisciplinary teams and providing the intelligence work for the targeted uh, efforts that, that we, we are uh, on, on, this, uh, on this area. As I've indicated, we will soon release the National Intelligence Estimate and the National Intelligence Priorities as approved by the Cabinet for the country to understand the type of national security threats that we are dealing with and also the concomitant responses and, and work that is being done by the multidisciplinary law enforcement teams to respond to those threats. And we continue to plead and uh, call upon all South Africans to respond and assist the law enforcement agencies when dealing with crime, including the extension case. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Honorable Skosana. Well, we move on. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Honorable Chair, oh, are, you, are you bringing me back now? I'm saying this issue is unbecoming. We can't be complaining about interpreters all the time we are told we don't have interpreters. People at home want to listen. People want to listen. With all these other languages are being prioritized. Thank you, Honorable Skosana. Uh, yeah, we, we take note of your point. It's not that there is no interpretation services available today. There was just some technical difficulties, but ICT is, is attending to that. Thank you. Okay. The last supplementary question will be asked by the Honorable Saleh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Minister, the International Court of Justice has found Israel to be responsible for apartheid policies. The United Nations declared Israel an apartheid state in June 2024. South Africa signed the International Convention on the Suppression and Punishment of the Crime of Apartheid. During apartheid South Africa, our freedom fighters and liberation movements were branded terrorists, and many were put on trial for terrorism amongst other charges. What steps is the State Security Agency taking against Zionist South Africans who financially support acts of terrorism against Palestinians? and those who joined the Israeli Defense Force to perpetrate acts of terrorism in occupied Palestine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before you take the floor, Honorable Minister, uh, Honorable Souls, your hand is raised again. Is um, it a new matter? We have responded to the issue of the translation services. No, Honorable Chair, but I think uh, you, you were somewhat mis misguided as to how this took place. I raised the hand online. I think there's a delay. So you responded whilst the minister was on the floor and it looked like we interrupted the minister. So I want to apologize to the minister, but I think there's a delay online. I raised my hand online long before the minister. So he only recognized it during the minister. So apologies to the minister. It wasn't meant to interrupt her. Okay, thank you. Honorable the minister. Apology accepted. And on the question of uh, terrorism and the designation and classification of terrorism, there are two factors. The first one is that South Africa is a signatory to the relevant UN conventions. Therefore, the designation of ter terrorist organization and terrorists is as per the UN, in line with the UN convention, including our own framework for the operational framework that we use. Our designation of terrorists is in line with what the UN prescribes as terrorists. We are not responding to any designation by any other country except that we, South Africa, has determined in line with the United Nations. And in terms of that work, everyone who violates and qualifies to be designated in terms of the United Nations framework and the South African operational framework as a terrorist will be deemed as such and treated as such and the money flows are going to be blocked as such. Thank you. 
Thank you, um, Minister. Before we move on to the uh, next supplementary question, I believe the Honourable Skusana has again raised her hand. Yes, Honourable, uh, uh, Honourable Chair. Thank, thank you so, so much. Once again, I, I want you to put this on record. There's vacancy on this language I'm talking about, Siswati and Ms. Debele. There's vacancy uh, 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 in Debele. The lady has retired. She has retired. And Siswati, there's no one. There's no te technical pro issues here. We should, we should not be misleading the house. There's vacancy. There's no one as, as we speak. I'm asking Thank you, Chair, okay. that this matter has to be addressed. As a matter of agency, thank you, Honourable Kusana. Uh, we will look into that. Honourable Members, we see. Address, address it, Chair. Yeah, thank, thank you, you uh, Honourable Kusana. Obviously, if there's vacancies, they must be attended to urgently. May I also plead that you lobby your your whip to take this matter to the Chief Whips Forum so that we don't take away from the time the executive is to account by way of answering questions any longer. Honourable Members, question number 14 has been asked by the Honourable Dick Khale to the Minister of the, in the Presidency, the Honourable the Minister. Thank you, Honourable House Chair. The principal responsibility yeah. of the State Security Agency, as indicated in the National Strategic Intelligence Act of 1994, is to provide government with intelligence or counterintelligence on Correct. domestic and foreign threats or potential threats to national security, security of the Republic or its people. In doing so, the SSA plays a crucial role in supporting law enforcement agencies in the fight against crime and corruption, which threaten the authority of the state. In this regard, intelligence products are shared with the National Intelligence Coordinating Committee, NICOC, and its other principal members who are crime intelligence of SAPS and the defense intelligence, but we also share information with the South African Police Service directly and also the National Joint mm -hmm. Operational and Intelligence But also we share intelligence I with the uh, departments uh, that, re uh, that are concerned on the matter that we pick up. So SSA regularly provides intelligence to departments of the state as and when required or when the matters arise. In intensifying efforts to fight crime, the SSA plays a counterintelligence role on departmental intelligence by conducting countermeasures against espionage, sabotage and subversion, security vetting, security advising, security investigation, and securing of government events, and the provision of security awareness within departments. To improve on intelligence sharing and coordination through the NACOC, the Minister, after consultation with the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence of the Sixth Parliament, gazetted the regulations for intelligence coordination in April 2024, for years since time immemorial. And the SSA gathers intelligence with the purpose of countering crimes and supporting other structures, such as, such as the South African uh, Police Service, the Directorate of Priority Crime Investigation, and others. This is done through the provision of forewarning and insight as well as developing intelligence on proactive measures against crime by identifying, profiling, and investigating criminal individuals or groupings and networks that are involved in crime. The SSA also takes part in crime fighting, joint operations, and investigations with its counterparts with, with the aim of prosecuting identified criminal networks operating within and outside the borders of South Africa. In this regard, the SSA liaises with intelligence and security services of other countries within the Southern African region, SADC, African continent, and the rest of the world with the aim of countering transnational organized uh, crime. Thank you. Thank you. The first opportunity to ask a supplementary question is that of the Honorable Dick uh, Thank you very much, House Chairperson. Uh, the Honorable Minister, the coordination of intelligence work on the states was found to be one of the weaknesses during the 2021 July unrest. What is the assessment of the minister with regard to the level of coordination of the intelligence community? Thank you. The Honorable the Minister. Thank you, House Chair. Indeed, there was a problem with the coordination of intelligence that led to the challenges of the July 2021. 
But since we took over with the responsibility, we have worked with NICOC and the other principal members of NICOC to make sure that we've got the national intelligence coordination uh, regulations, which are on the site since the establishment of SSA, to make sure that we coordinate intelligence. That has resulted in improvement in the coordination of work. It's for that reason that members would have noticed that whenever the police are acting, they indicate that it's intelligence driven. The mechanism of sharing intelligence has also improved, but also the functionality of the JCPS cluster, the Justice Crime Prevention and Security Cluster has improved and matters of the intelligence, matters of intelligence are also discussed in that forum so that we can then improve uh, th th that, co that, that coordination. And it's for that reason that we've been able to deal with a number of issues. You know there were threats towards the election, both the, the election itself and also the uh, post-election environment. But because of the intelligence work, we were able to, to fight those before the threats materialized. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. The second supplementary question will be asked by the Honourable Kohler. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Minister, there's a saying that one swallow does not a summer make. Uh, one massive drug bust by crime intelligence actually shows the magnitude of the problem rather than being an end to the issue. Uh, the fact that we have drug labs set up at upmarket estates all around the country, that we have no x-ray machines checking trucks driving who knows what in and out of the country, uh, that generally government technology is so out of date. It does seem that our intelligence agencies and services are expected to achieve miracles with their budgets being slashed. Uh, and their hands tied behind their backs. What's the solution? The Honourable the Minister. Thank you, Honourable Hasha. I think today my sin is to sit next to the Minister of Police and the Minister of Home Affairs because I'm settled with questions that must be sent to, to my colleagues. <laughs> It's in, indeed, the, we require technology, as the Minister of Home Affairs referred to earlier, to enhance some of the work. At the SSA, we are improving our technology capability to make sure that we respond. And that technology capability does not mean SSA must develop that capability, but must also have access to that capability. There is important capability that the country has that sits in the CSIR, for instance, that we are, able, we are going to be able to have access to that technology and review, which will improve some of the work that, that we are doing. But internally, we are working to enhance that capability. We also, given the level of cooperation, we are able to work and have access to what the police can see, what home affairs can see, and what other departments can see, more especially those that are technology driven. We are integrating our work to be able to have a view of the whole country at a life level, and that detail will be provided to the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence as and when it's, 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 it's established. And we'll, we'll also take note of the issue around the budget of cyber security and technology related within SSA. We are working with the management team to review and, and, and that, that budget and we'll do the necessary submissions when the time is due. Thank you. Thank you. The third supplementary question will be asked by Honorable Mente. As Bonge House Chair, now Minister, it's good to hear that there is some integration taking place uh, between your department and the other departments because earlier on uh, we heard from National Treasury that the issue of the 30% uh, policy is not their law and or their policy. And this is what is being used on the ground to stop a lot of projects and service delivery for our people. We see waste not being collected because waste trucks are being intimidated. Uh, construction sites are being intimidated and all of that. How do you get involved there to curb such horrible crime? And secondly, we saw people setting up military camps in South Africa People of Nail Sprite and surrounding woke up one day to some men that were intimidating young women. Honorable mentor, and, uh, unfortunately, your time has expired. What was your role then? Thank you. The Honorable the Minister. Thank you, Honorable House Chair. I'll deal with the question that is relevant to the first question, which is the question of what are we dealing with to deal with extortion rings, the, 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 the construction mafias, the water tech mafias and related, as indicated earlier, 
jointly with the police, we've got multidisciplinary teams that are focusing on that work specifically, and we have targeted uh, high priority areas that are largely affected, and that detail in terms of the work of state security will be provided to the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence. The police do not report, they only report when they make arrests. Thank you. Thank you. The last supplementary question will be asked by Honorable CB. Oh, it's Honorable Kana. I can some time stone. Minister, on that on that very point, would you say yourself, yourself, Minister, that the proliferation of these extortion rackets points to the failure of the domestic branch of state security agents? Or is it a success? The Honourable the Minister. Thank you. I will not. I do not understand how the domestic branch of state security agency gets affected, gets to be a failure because there are extortion rings. And if you go to the reasons why you had extortion rings, it's people who are economically disadvantaged and opportunistically use those opportunities to then become destructive in the country. And that's why they go and claim that they want 30% in the business that they do not even have capacity to deliver on. It has nothing to do with a domestic branch. Our the responsibility that we have as a country is to make sure we build an economy that young people and other people who do not have opportunities for access to economy can then not be exploited by criminals and criminal syndicates for their nefarious means. And that is the real issue that the government of national unity has made an apex priority of uh, making an economy that works, but also creating employment so that young people do not become victims of opportunists, of criminal opportunists. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Number 25 has been asked by the